Hello, I am Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one. I don't care. Hello, Avery. And Merry Christmas, Andreas. It's not Christmas. Fuck you. <laughs> and also, what is your name? Um, oh shit, I have a name. I'm Lily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and welcome I'm to the Bone the Closet. I'm Ann Troy. I'm Ann Boon Troy. No, I don't think you are. But, but um, anyway, welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Today we are covering Amphibia Season 3. Um, I almost said Season 4, and that would have been really weird, because that does not exist. Um, <laughs> Some people wish it existed, but... I think it's better that the show just ended. I mean, I can't imagine what a season four would even be. That like That's, we've literally I, already sh we've already shown the three girls being ten years older and established that they literally can't go back to Amphibia. So we can't pull an anime, a new series with their kids. Uh, please no. Oh, God, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, um, looking at you, Naruto. Oh, right, yeah, remember that show that we were just discussing? Yeah, that also has it. We are not covering it. I forgot uh, to tell you. Maybe. It's something that I would consider. I depending don't on, wanna... <laughs> depending on how much I like the show. They, I mean... Making a series about the child um, just ruins the series. I don't even like the ending, really, um, of the show that we're talking about, not Amphibia. Yeah, but Love I mean, Amphibia. I don't know. I feel like you can't do worse than what Planet Sheen did to Jimmy Neutron. I guess we can always find out. <laughs> but yeah, um, so. Th this podcast will contain spoilers for Amphibia Season 3. If you wish to avoid spoilers, there will be a link below in the description to Just Watch, which will have all the places that you can rent, purchase, or stream this series. Um, our link is to the U.S. version of the site. However, if you use the Just Watch app, it will automatically redirect you to your country's page, and you can change the country from the website page if you're using the website. For us here in the U.S., the show is available on Disney+. Plus. Um, you can join us next week for uh, The Matrix Revolutions and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3. So, you know, two more threes. And didn't we just release Spider-Man 3 yesterday? Um, I don't know. I, yes. I, I'm pretty sure... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. So it's and like... Literally, we just gone through, like, um, our MCU Phase 2 retrospective. Lilo and Stitch has a glitch 2, um, Amphibia 2, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2. Now we're yeah. on to the threes. Lots of threes here. So, uh, next it's gonna be fours. Just watch. Um, last, um, last week? Yeah, um, last week we had Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Right, because uh, we haven't recorded that yet. We will. Um, yeah, like we're recording that next week, but like for the people listening, it's already released. Um, it, you will be able to join us in two months for uh, The Seven Deadly Sins. Oh yeah, that was the show that we were talking about. Yeah. Um, so that is the show that's replacing Amphibia. So look forward to that. Um, so also in the description, you will find a link to our Patreon, where you can vote on future episodes of this show, as well as get access to episodes of this show early, as well as access to or early access to episodes of our sister show, Off the Shelf, which is about books. That podcast is exclusive to YouTube, YouTube and Patreon. And, um... After this big, like, recording session we're doing, I think I'm going to buckle down and actually start getting more episodes of that produced. Um, hey, I get a break from um, podcast recordings, and you have to do more uh, recordings for something else. Yeah, but 
the thing is, like, Off the Shelf is, like, it, it's much shorter. Uh, they're <laughs> roughly 15-minute episodes. Or 15 minute is the minimum, um, yeah. I should say. So, um, it, I mean, I do like having a break, but obviously doing this is really fun. Yeah. Especially going through a bunch of different uh, movies, I probably would never have any reason of um, watching. Right. This isn't um, one of them. I mean, Amphibia is a show I probably never would have watched on my own unless it had come out during the time in my life where I didn't have access to streaming services and all I had was direct TV. Like, maybe then I would have watched it, but, but now it with didn't access come out to, in that time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, it, it's one of those things where, like, with all this access to a bunch of other streaming services and stuff, with tons of other stuff to watch... I don't think Amphibia is something I would have gravitated to, especially because, like, the first two seasons really didn't do much for me. Um, this season was a lot better. Although I, I do have some gripes that I want to complain about. They're not gripes with the show itself, but more with Disney. Um, Interesting. I have, um, there is an episode I really don't like about this. There's an episode I really love about this, but we'll I'll talk about that all later. There is some stuff yeah. we have to get into, right? Yeah. About, um, so um, just down below, there's going to be a just watch link. Um, it'll re our link will redirect you to um, your site. Fuck your country. I already said that. Oh really? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> then what do, do we have to say? I have to mention anchor. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Um, yeah, also so in our YouTube link, um, YouTube video, we have a link to Acre.fm, um, Patreon. Uh, our Patreon link I mean, is also there. By I way. already mentioned Patreon. <laughs> Actually, yeah, our Patreon link is in two places. Um, in the link of the description and also in our Anchor link. Oh, is it? Interesting. I mean, I'm pretty sure I put it in our uh, anchor description. Yeah, I, I, I almost I almost never go on the anchor. Yeah, that's mostly my domain. Yeah, but um, anyway, um, so like Lily said, there's going to be a link to anchor.fm in the description where you'll find links to every platform this podcast is on, as well as links to our Instagram and Twitter where you can be notified when we release a new episode. Um... But with all that being said, please get out if you'd like to avoid spoilers, because we're going to start talking about this show now. I have stuff I want to say, but I really am interested in what you want to say. So, this season of Amphibia is extremely serialized. So, Disney, why the fuck did you cancel the Owl House when it is less serialized than this season of Amphibia? Honestly, and this is one, like, this is the theory I had um, for a while now. It was that since Owl House and Amphibia were, like, their concepts were really the same, I almost want to think that since Amphibia was ending around the like, because the entire thing with uh, Owl House being canceled was right around the time Amphibia was ending. I'm starting to wonder if that wasn't a coincidence. I'm starting to wonder if it was really canceled because of homophobia, and we were just being led to believe it's something else. Well, that's the thing. It in. Obviously, Matt Brawley was able to get in the all the gay scenes he wanted because this was the final season. Yeah, th uh, there were some there were some characters in this that I was like, "You're giving off gay gay vibes really hard right now." Um, uh, particularly, particularly, I was thinking that with uh, Yunan and Olivia. Oh yeah, that's absolutely canon. <laughs> but 
there is something very missable that I want to talk to you about. Um, it's about the final scene. It actually reveals that Sasha is uh, by. I didn't notice that at all. Yeah, so we're in her car. Um, she actually has a buy flag. Oh, I didn't see it. I think it was like around the front of the car, like the um, the mirror. You know, I'm honestly not surprised though, because Sasha was also giving me like gay vibes throughout the season. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Also, so, um, actually, all three of the girls gave me, um, I mean, there's a reason why people still ship, um, Anne and Marcy. You know, before I something. didn't see it, but when rewatching, I can see it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, none of this goes anywhere close to the level that, uh, the Owl House went to with re representation. Oh, absolutely, um, not. But it's nice to see. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we're not here to talk about the Owl House. Yet. Um, yet. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I, I think um, getting more representation is, uh, is really good. We saw crumbs of it in Star vs. the Forces of Evil. And I... I Honestly, I don't even know if the word crumbs is fair. More like crumb. Just a single crumb. <laughs> it's like, you know, you eat a cookie, and then you have, like, the minuscule things on the floor, you know, for, like, I don't know, a dog to eat, or even a, mo a mouse. Yeah, it's Yeah, that. it's... Because, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we had one episode that in any way ex uh, tried to explore Star's bisexuality. That was it. I mean, you have theories that Marco is probably gender fluid, but at the end of the day, they're just theories. Yeah. Um, but so, enough about yeah. th that. Um, and, and, and then there was, like, nothing in Gravity Falls despite Alex Hirsch fighting and fighting and fighting for it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a travesty, honestly. Um, fuck. Okay, I... Before I go off on, like, the endless praise I have for this, I do need to discuss, um, a few episodes. Only one I can actually remember. I know there was another. But one episode I just really did not like was, um, the Sprivey episode. I know I'm not alone on that one. Yeah, that got really annoying to me. Um, oh, and also, um, while I was talking, it was the other one I had a mild dislike towards was, um, the Spider, uh, Sprig episode. See, that one I actually enjoyed. Yeah, just didn't do it for me. But, um, I don't know, I found Yunan to be particularly annoying, but I, I think Yunan. that's, like, I think that's her entire shtick is being annoying, so. I mean, I she mean, I was, guess... um, really nice, especially when it was the, um, I think it was when she was talking to Olivia about, um, if you're going to talk about treason, I insist you do it in private. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of funny. Uh, there were a lot of, like, you know, just random funny things in this season that actually got me to laugh. Um, I can't think of anything right now. Also, while we're talking about Vibia, especially season three, I cannot pass up the moment to talk about um, the absolute war crimes that this season has committed. They brought back Healy's. I mean, Healy's were never that bad to begin with, in my opinion. They fucking brought back Healy's. They should be executed. Nah, better than those stupid fucking hoverboards. I mean, if they're getting executed based on Healy's, I don't know what 
um, the internet would do if they uh, brought back hoverboard. Like, I, I swear ones. to fucking Christ. Like, the, those hoverboard things could have been so much cooler if they uh, didn't Hubbard? have a tendency to explode. I was going to say hover, but you know. Yeah, like, also, if they hovered, that would have been cool. But they had a <laughs> tendency to explode. You know, um, I bet if they actually hovered, they wouldn't have a tendency to explode. Yeah, I mean, just get good. Be like the Back to the Future 2 hoverboards. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Fucking lazy. <laughs> yeah, get good. But, I, I don't know, Healy's... I, I never really thought Healy's were that bad. Um... I mean, to be honest, like, I actually owned a pair of Heelys as a kid, but I never got the hang of them, and then eventually I got pissed off, took the wheels out of them, and just used them as regular shoes. Well, okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> um, okay, there's a lot of praise I want to give this series. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I, I do want to talk a little bit about the finale because there's some interesting color theory sort of sh shenanigans going on. Um, okay. So we have Anne being... Okay, so we already see Anne gaining her powers from the blue gem in season two, and then there's also a red one and a green one. And the interesting thing is, before Sasha and Marcy ever get their powers we see uh we see marcy in side the core uh wearing a green outfit and we eventually see sasha inside the core wearing a red outfit yeah so so like already this is um the this is like some interesting ways to like kind of point us in, in the direction of, like, these two are going to inherit the powers from these gems. But also, also, red, blue, and green are the primary colors of light. Um, and then one and absorbed all of them and became white. Yeah. And uh, I just um, thought there's that some was other something... things about this. Um, obviously, before any of this happened, there was foreshadowing with the girl's eyes flashing um, these colors, uh, uh, the respective colors, at least. Yeah. And, and you, know, it's a you know, the fact that um, they already had the power within them. The gems just drained them of it. See, uh, something else I, d I do want to point out is, like, the Mother of Ohms uh, talks about, like, this spell that's supposed to kill the life of the user, and, and it's like, well, hopefully it won't come to that. And I'm like... Oh, yeah, we all knew it, it was going to come to that. Yeah, like, it's going to fucking come to that. It's the principle of Chekhov's gun. You don't introduce something if it's not going to come to that. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we all knew. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also knew that they were going to do some kind of thing to make her not die. Did you expect it to go to this extreme? Eh. I knew it would be something ridiculous, so... <laughs> I mean, imagine just waking up and meeting God. I mean, I would hope it wasn't, like... I, I really just didn't want it to be as ridiculous as um, the scene in Pokemon, the first movie, where all the Pokemon oh, yeah. start crying, and that just brings Ash back to life. Well, I mean, what would they fucking cry on? It didn't even leave a body. <laughs> also, when that version of Anne died, I legitimately got surprised that she was even moving or talking at all. Because I thought she had been turned to stone, because that's what it looked like to me. Oh, yeah. No, apparently um, it was just her flesh um, turning to not flesh. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know why you described it that way, but all right. I guess, like, um, flesh, bone, whatever, just withering away to nothingness. Okay, so you know what episode I didn't like? Uh, what is that? So, it's the episode where the toads, the frogs, and the nukes, uh, the newts, not oh, nukes. Oh, that oops. one. They, they all come together, and they're fighting and shit, and I'm like, okay, this is annoying. It was okay at best, I'll be honest. It didn't yeah, make me like, go like, wow, I really hate this, but it definitely didn't make me go, this is one of the reasons why I love this show. Yeah, I, I, I was just getting tired. I'm like, okay, yeah, get to, get to the point already. And, yeah, it, it, that, that was not a fun episode to watch for me. I think that was my least favorite episode this season, um, with the whole Sprivey episode being a close second. <laughs> you know, I've thought about this for a while now. The entire concept between this show and the Owl House, I'm not going to touch on it much, but in this show, it's very interesting how Anne didn't choose to be here. Uh, um, with Owl House, Luz had a choice, and they chose to stay. No, Anne is literally trapped in this world and trying to get back home. From yeah. episode one. Yeah, see, that's one of the things where, like, um, it's good to have uh, things that separate the two shows. Um, especially when they're, like, they have a similar concept. Um, but their flaws, uh, like, not the flaws of the shows, but the flaws of the characters couldn't be more different. Um, yeah. I was actually even joking about it to myself. These two shows ask a very interesting questions. Is it better to have friends or not have friends? <laughs> you know, having friends, they could be assholes. And, well, you know, getting I mean, trapped in another world. Not having friends. Well, loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you could definitely say loose has friends now. Um, yeah, but I mean, the beginning of this series. Yeah. I don't know. To me, it's like, I don't know. I don't really agree with the perspective that, like, Marcy was an asshole. Um, I wouldn't say Marcy was... Uh, asshole was a bit strong. Pretty strong. Yeah. But, obviously, um, I mean, they were never really nice to each other. Even Anne could probably be described as an asshole to, um, you know, uh, other people. I feel like of the three of them, just as, this is just my personal take, um, Sasha was the worst. Oh, obviously. Them. Yeah, and I say but, that despite the fact that out of the three, she's my favorite character. I mean, obviously, because she also had room to grow, and grow she did. Yeah, like, I feel like when when you're a character like Sasha, and you're starting from... It, when you start farther back, that means you have more to grow, more growing to do, so what there's I more love, character development to watch. See, what I love about this show is that... Sasha had multiple opportunities to become good. And she just didn't take them. Because uh, she was still stuck in her, um, you know, mindset. Right. Though, with each time, um, something, you know, something she caused and something bad happened... Uh, the mindset, you can see the mindset getting weaker. And you know, um, you just kind of reminded me, um, there's another thing I really love in the finale, um, and it's how the finale showcases how trauma can, like, cause you to just completely freeze and not be able to function. 
in a serious scenario. Um, specifically, this happens with uh, Sprig and uh, Papadaya and Polly when they come face to face with the uh, the herons that, uh, well, they killed Sprig and Polly's parents, and I guess that would be um, Papadaya's. Uh, Kids, well, yeah. One of them is his As, kid. Yeah, one presumably. of them is kid. <laughs> yeah. I, technically, and the other one, is, one of them is kid, and the other one probably kid by law. Yeah. And you know, it's something, too, that I, I was very much surprised to, like, make the connection very early, was, like, figuring out that the planters were descended from Leaf. Oh, thank God, Avery. Okay. So, there... And you're going to probably be saying like, uh, that commercials, like, say what? When I tell you this. But there is a surprising amount of people that think that... Um, fuck, what was the name um, that you just said? Leaf? Yeah, Leaf was um, uh, Sprig's parent, not descendant. There's a surprising amount of people that think this. I don't Are know how. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I I've actually seen comments where people were trying to defend, like, um, no, no, that can't be the case because um, this person is obviously... Uh, Sprig's parents, like, bro, no. See, that doesn't even make sense, because, like, Leaf knew Andreas when he was, like, still pretty young. Okay, and... I think admittedly a lot of these, when I was looking at it, the final episodes have not come out yet. But still, I think it was still obvious. Yeah, like, Leaf knew Andreas when he was pretty young, and, like, they say multiple times that like, it, Newt's? I, I, I don't even know if... I, I, whatever Andreas is, he lives, like, for... he He's been alive for, like, a thousand years, I think? Around that, yeah. So, like... Yeah, no, that... I'm sorry, that doesn't work. It, he... Leaf could not be Sprig's mom. Absolutely not. Also, you actually brought uh, Andreas. Um, so, there's something I want to ask you in the final scene oh remind me to bring something else up so in the final scene where all the other uh, people we go back to um wood um and we see andrus did you notice that um his eyes were clouded not really no well they were um that's because apparently he refused any um, life, any help to preserve um, his life-altering um, mech in his body. And he's just going to be living out the rest of his life, um, helping if, you know the world a bad time. See, I'm wondering how the government is going to be handled going forward in oh, Amphibia? That's a very good question that, sadly, I don't have an answer to. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I can't imagine the people would want Andreas back as the leader. Um, well, Andreas is most likely in that scene in more or less in exile, or just living by himself. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, that seems very, uh, something. I was Here's... pleased to see a lot of characters from the human world coming back in the finale. Um, disappointed that Molly was not one of them. That is a shame. But, uh, what can you do? Wait, who was Molly again? Molly was the, the girl in the Spider Sprig episode. Oh yeah, um, she was there. I did not see her, and I was looking. Yeah, the the girl with the multicolored hair. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, she was in. I believe she was even uh, with them. 
like when they escape to the school. I specifically was looking out for her and I did not see her at all. Or was that, or wait, am I remembering? Oh, wait, I could just be remembering when they uh, broke the planters out. Actually, yeah, she I was there just for that remembering. Episode. Oh, yeah. I yeah, she was definitely that. there for that episode. Um, okay. Um, maybe I'll have to rewatch the finale episode. Um, it's, now I'm thinking about it. She's pro That's probably what I'm uh, remembering then. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, there's this uh, character. I forget her name. I sent you a message about this character, the character with blue hair. Uh, whose voice, who, like, whose voice actor also voices another character in Inside Job. Oh, the character that when you send it to me, I actually could not remember that character. <laughs> oh, Terry. Uh, her name's Terry. I loved her. She's, she's great. Um, Anne's mom is also pretty great. I don't particularly have any feelings about her dad. There's a lot of people in the fandom that love her dad. Yeah, I, I, I have I just don't have any feelings about him. He's there. He's uh, he's fine, I guess. I mean, at least he's not Amity's dad. Mm. Although realistically, he's also just kind of there, and her mom is the problem. But yeah, we're not here to talk about the Owl House. Um, yet. Wait, did we say that three times? No, it's been twice. Oh. Anyway. I mean, we might have said it in another episode. No, I mean, um, we brought up uh, Owl House in this episode three times. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think this show, it did a really good job at, like, balancing the pacing, in my opinion. Because I, I disagree with a lot, like, the people who are saying that the first what was it, seven or eight episodes are slow? I think I, they do a good job at showing how um, how the planters have to adapt to being in a completely different world and um, also doing, doing a, much, a, a fantastic job at showing how difficult it is to get back. Um, mm-hmm. And they, it, I feel like, um, unlike a, another show, they don't rush getting back. Well, you're avoiding talking about the Owl House for a fourth time? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I really did love it, the opening episodes, but I also didn't really overstay its welcome either because right around that time I was like, okay, we can go back to Amphibia. Yeah, like, it, it feels like they went back to Amphibia at the perfect time. Obviously, uh, said, today, like, seeing, oh, hey, the world's fucking dying. That's great. Yeah, that said, though, I, I, I do have to say, like, I, I appreciate that this season doesn't feel like it has much filler at all. Um, cause like even the episodes where they're on earth, uh, it feels like they're learning important character lessons. So it, it leads to this season feeling more like it's all story. Also, even the Christmas episode actually did have, um, not crucial plot information, but crucial um, lore stuff as well. I don't know. I mean, if you it noticed. also did. It did progress the plot. Um, so it was also that uh, final episode before um, you know, Escape to Amphibia. Yeah, and then like I remember seeing um, as I was watching, I remember seeing oh, the next episode's titled "The Beginning of the End." Yeah, no episode is ever titled that, and it's a tame uh, when it's like a tame episode. <laughs> <laughs> Was well, like no episode is labeled true colors, and nothing interesting happens. I mean, I've seen episodes labeled true colors, and nothing interesting really happens. 
Oh, well, not in Amphibia. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um, I think this season was overall a lot better than the first two. So it is going to get a higher rating. Um, um, there is... There is actually one more misconception that actually makes a little bit of sense. So you remember um, at the end, we cut forward to Amphibia? That is not 10 years later. Yeah, no. That is actually that eight pretty... months. I mean, I knew it was some time gap, but they didn't, like... The 10 years later card happened after that. Yeah. I just found it gets a little bit confusing, especially when they didn't fucking explain how much later it is. Just later. <laughs> yeah, like, to me, I was like, okay, yeah, this is later. Not that much later. Polly's still pretty young. Um, Sprig doesn't look much older. And Hot Pop isn't dead. Yeah. Although I don't think Hot Pop would be dead in 10 years. If he was a real frog, yes. Actually, depends on what kind of frog he is. I remember I mean, frogs. Um, or was that turtles that can live for a long time? Eh. Turtles can live, like, well over 100 years. I forgot how long frogs can live, but probably not that long. Well, I know they mentioned that he had been farming for 45 years. So, okay, take that um, for whatever it's worth. I mean, he is a very old frog. Yeah, I just don't think he'd be dead in 10 years. I feel like he has at least 20 under his belt. <laughs> I mean, unless something happened. Hey, look, another heron. Shut up. <laughs> But yeah, and then uh, then like we also get the confirmation that Anne is gonna die at ninety two. Yeah, I don't know um, who needed this information, but that is in fact true. Wait, no, hold on. She's thirteen, seventy eight. Yeah, no, uh, actually, it would be ninety one. Well, hopefully, Anne doesn't make that mistake and have uh, reservations planned for ninety two. <laughs> yeah, hope not. I also hope that I never live that long. <laughs> eh, it might. The world might get interesting. If it doesn't, I, know, I might like, as well just die with the end of the world anyway. I'd be perfectly happy dying in my 70s. 80s I'd also be fine with. I really don't want to get to 90s. <laughs> I mean... I feel like at that point I've lived too long. <laughs> well... I mean, after Anne's death, it's just going to be more life anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Where but she hey, becomes a watcher, Bagels potentially. <laughs> there's, there's Bagels Friday. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, like, I don't know. I think this season, it's a lot better. So, like I said, we'll get a higher rating. But... Oh, uh, there's a but. Yeah. I have to dock a point, because there is a Wilhelm scream. Really? God damn, I didn't catch it this time. Yeah, I don't even remember where it was, because I saw the episode it was in yesterday. So, um... Hmm. I think it was yesterday. Um, also, can we note... Can we first talk about how this series... This season, in fact, not only became fucking Star Wars, but then Majora's Mask... Yeah, and then, like, also, they did some, like, Sailor Moon shit, too, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, well, let's talk about that fucking ending card, like, the credits. Oh, you mean the credits I didn't watch? The, the credits that basically turned um, Amphibia into a fucking anime. <laughs> I mean, I never watched I... all the way through, I never cared that much. But they are absolutely different from the season one and two, I can tell you that much. Yeah, um, something else of, of note, too, is, like, they didn't use the theme song um, in the last two episodes. Right. Though, 
God, I absolutely watched the entire credits on the final episode. If you didn't um, know, they changed that like uh, Gravity Falls did that one time. Yeah, all, but also like the last two episodes were extremely long. Um, I, I'm very curious how those aired on TV because they're longer than 30 minutes. Um, yeah. Especially, if, I'm, I actually want to say that these two episodes aired around the exact same time. It feels like they would have, yeah. It feels There's like, also, um, episode, like the last two episodes of Gravity Falls. What the fuck is that? Yeah, and there, you know. there's also a lot of weird cuts where it would have gone to commercial, which watching it through streaming makes it feel a little weird. Yeah, but there's really nothing you can do. Yeah. But anyway, I, I've, I've really said all I want to about this show. I'm done. Um, I enjoyed season three. One and two were fine, but not something I would have gone out of my way to watch. One more question to you that I actually want to talk about, and just one last thing. Were you happy that, like, you actually sat down and watched through the entire thing? Or is this I just, mean, like, another ha- day at the office? <laughs> In some ways, it's just another day at the office. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not unhappy that I finished the show. I just don't really care. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but I actually want to touch on the theme, uh, the themes of this show because uh, I don't know. I um, especially around the time when I watched it, you know, graduating from high school, the themes of um, letting go. And what happens when you just can't let go? Um, I don't know, kind of connected to me. I mean, you know, it's something a lot of adults can learn from, like, particularly really old adults. Um, like, it's something uh, Hapadaya said in, I believe it was season two, um, that, like, I feel like a lot of people can learn. If you quit clinging to the if you quit clinging to the past and embrace change you get a say in how the future looks oh right that was one of um hop pop's friends that said that no he said it did he no, to- i thought he learned that after you know he took out um you know a few guards and um pieces of somebody's sauce yeah, I remember him saying it at some point to that friend. I don't probably know. said it, that. It, I don't know. But yeah. Um, specifically, Marcy couldn't let go of her friends. And that just says uh, how their friendship was. Because uh, Marcy would go to the extreme of uh, you know, relying on an unreliable box than just talking it out. Yeah. And then obviously the core, which didn't, didn't want to die, didn't want to be forgotten. There's a, a lot there. And then also the. Uh, uh, sorry, just one other thing. Just a side tangent. Not really a tangent, just a comment. Seeing mm. Sasha doing like cheerleading routines is really fucking weird. Why is that? Because it's just not something I can, like, actually picture her doing. Well, too bad. You gotta picture it in animation. <laughs> Imagine if that was a book. It's like, I'm sorry, she did what? Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. Um... Uh... I know this is going to sound weird, but it almost feels like trying to imagine Melinda May cheerleading. Oh my god. 
Oh god, I I cannot imagine that. That I can imagine Sasha cheerleading all day, but Melinda May, oh hell no. I can't imagine her dancing while enjoying it. I could picture her slow dancing and enjoying it, but <laughs> any any other kind of dancing, I can't really picture her doing. No, it, it, if she would try to have to do cheerleading on like a mission or something, she had like the worst frown on her face or just a neutral expression, like I am not enjoying this right now. <laughs> yeah, um, but more about her next week. Um, so do you really have anything else you want to add? I guess the only thing I have to add is the critic ratings. Yeah, or I guess critic rating. Critic rating and a bunch of random people on Google. Yeah. Also, I wanted to like that show. Um, so we have 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb and 91% liked this show. Uh, 91% of Google users. Yeah. That is. But, um, yeah. So I, I would have given this... Uh, I would have given this season an 8.5, but the Wilhelm scream knocks it down to 8.4. Honestly, I have no... My hands are tied to give this an extremely high rating. I listen to the credits um, often. So, honestly, do I, do I go to the 9s? I think I have to go to a low 9s to 9.2. I I personally could not put any season of this show anywhere near the nines. Um, <laughs> the show personally affected me in a lot of different ways. Yeah, but anyway, um, that's really all that we have for this episode. So you can join us next week for uh, The Matrix Revolutions and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3. And you can join us in two months for The Seven Deadly Sins. We're committing sins. Uh, Stop. <laughs> Until next time, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and we will be seeing you.